For a long time, William H. Macy was one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood. He didn't just play the characters he was given, he became them. Often mistaken for this guy, he took on role after role after role until finally he was given the respect he deserved as one of the best character actors of his generation. Let's take a look back on the life and career of William H. Macy. Macy was born on March 13, 1950, in Miami, Florida. He spent the first 10 years of his life in Georgia and then moved to Cumberland, Maryland. Macy's father, William H. Macy Sr., was a bomber pilot who was awarded an Air Medal and the Distinguished Flying Cross for flying a B-17 Flying Fortress bomber during World War II. Macy's mother, Lois, was a former war widow whose first husband had died in 1943. At Allegheny High School, the teenage Macy began growing a fondness for acting. When he landed his first role performing in the stage production of Camelot, he truly enjoyed the theater experience. However, after graduating high school in 1968, Macy chose to pursue a different career path in veterinary medicine at West Virginia's Bethany College. But the desire to act was really hard to shake, and he eventually transferred to Goddard College in Vermont two years later, which Macy described as a hippie school. Macy honed his acting aspirations under the tutelage of playwright David Mamet. He was a harsh master, but he gave us respect, and uh, you could feel the rules. Uh, it became clear after a while when work was good and work wasn't good. After college, Macy decided to pursue an acting career full-time and moved to Chicago with Mamet, forming St. Nicholas Theater together a year later. They worked hand-in-hand -hand to make several theatrical features, which were mostly written by Mamet and performed by Macy for the company. For the rest of the 1970s, the actor tirelessly kept performing on stage until he made his way to land his first screen debut in the 1978 NBC miniseries, The Awakening Land. In 1980, he moved to New York City, where he starred in over 40 Broadway and off-Broadway plays. Four years later, he had a role in the direct-to-video title, The Boy Who Loved Trolls. From 1985 to 1988, he appeared in three episodes of Spencer for Hire, and also during this time, he got featured in the drama series Kate and Alley and The Equalizer, as well as the films The Last Dragon, Radio Days, House of Games, and Things Change. Macy played Tim Sullivan in the crime film Homicide in 1991. He did the television movies The Heart of Justice and The Water Engine. After this, he had a few more roles in a few more movies, including Betty and June and Searching for Bobby Fischer in 1992. William Starr began to shine when he wonderfully scored a nomination at the Emmy Awards for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Drama Series category in the pilot episode of ER in 1994. However, it was his next portrayal in Fargo in 1996 that truly catapulted him to widespread recognition. Macy knew that this role would change his career, and he wanted it real bad. I got the script to read for the uh, detective. It was one scene, and uh, I read that, and Joel and Ethan said, that's real good. You want to look at uh, this, this other role, Jerry Lindergaard? I said, yeah. And I went out in the hall, and I looked at the scenes, and I went in, and I read it for them, and they said, that's real good. You want to work on it and come back tomorrow? I said, yeah. So I was up all night. I memorized the entire script. Uh, everyone helped me with these scenes, and uh, I wanted it. Oh, God, I wanted it, which is really a dangerous thing for an actor. You want it too badly, and oof. It's hard to audition well when you want it that badly. But I went in and uh, I read. I thought I did well. And they said, that's real good. Thanks, thanks. 
and I was on pins and needles because I knew it was Joel and Ethan Cohen. Everyone was going to see it. Everyone in the biz, whether it was a hit or not, everyone was going to see it. I was born to play that role. I understood it completely. I mean, it was instantaneous that I knew what that guy was about and how to play it. I found out they were going to New York to see some actors. So I got my jolly little Lutheran ass on an airplane and I flew to New York and crashed that audition. I walked in and um, I said, they said, oh, Bill. And I said, yeah, I'm worried about you guys. I'm afraid you're going to screw up your movie by casting someone else in this role. They went, huh, you want to read again? And I said, yeah, and I read well. I had worked on the dialect, which I think was important to them. I said to Ethan, um, if you don't give me this role, I'm going to shoot your dog. He just got a puppy. <laughs> he laughed, thank God. Uh, and I was, I had a little cabin in Vermont, I still have it, uh, just a little cold water cabin. I had gotten it, I don't know how, Felicity loaned me some money to get this thing. Uh, I had been up there for about five days, and I, had, I had built a wood shop, and I would spent all day turning bowls. I have a lathe, a big lathe. I'd been up there smoking dope and turning bowls, and that's what I did when I was with the phone rang, and I got that job. And I was all alone. In the wilds of Vermont, my next neighbor was two and a half miles away. I was running around screaming and yelling. Oh man, there was no one to tell. It was a good night. He was nominated for Best Actor in a Supporting Role at the Academy Awards and also nominated for Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Supporting Role at the Screen Actor Guild Awards. The superb attainment he had scored unquestionably elevated his status in Hollywood enabling him to take part in a handful of well-known pictures, such as Air Force One, Pleasantville, and Magnolia. Macy's next big character role, playing Little Bill in Boogie Nights, really showed Macy's range and versatility, although the casting process this time took him by surprise. Uh, I was working somewhere and I got sent the script and uh, the version I read was way sexy. I mean, there was sex all through the thing. And I called my agent. I said, wait, this is, this is porn. Is this what he's going to do? And he said, I, no, it's Paul Thomas Anderson. We can get you his other film. Uh, no, they say it's not. It's going to have, by, by contract, it was going to have an R rating. Um, so that puts limits on it and it did get toned down but at any rate I was fascinated I said yeah uh, count me in but then they said um, Paul wants to meet with you and before that um, I saw Hard Eight which is his first film and it's stunning it's such a great film I saw that thing and I you know I so wanted to do Boogie Nights and Paul said uh, we met at the uh, Formosa Cafe, and uh, I had put my thoughts together how I was going to sell myself, you know, my take on the character and how I was going to play it, and mm, smart intellectual things to say about the script and everything, and I, I say, hey, well, I read the script, and that's it, Paul started talking, and I, at a point, I thought, Lord Almighty, I've got the role. He's selling me. He's trying to get me to do it. I came here to pitch him. He's pitching me. That's the first time I felt the Oscar nomination. He wanted me to do his his movie without auditioning. I'd never gotten anything without auditioning. Other than my wife and children, not auditioning is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Going unstoppable ever since, William kept scoring big achievements with his remarkable acting skills. Brilliantly collecting two more Emmy nominations in 2000 for his role in Sports Night and A Slight Case of Murder in 1999. He ultimately won the award through Door to Door in 2002 for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Miniseries or Movie category. Much to his delight, other subsequent performances in Seabiscuit in 2003 and The Wool Cap in 2004 also directed him to again obtain Golden Globe nominations for two consecutive years. 
therefore really solidified his reputation as an accomplished actor. Apart from his profession as an actor, he also worked as a producer, director, and writer, and even won an Emmy Award in 2003 for outstanding writing for a miniseries, movie, or dramatic special through Door to Door. In the summer of 2010, Macy began a journey to one of his best roles when he appeared in the Showtime pilot Shameless as the protagonist Frank Gallagher. The project ultimately went to series and its first season premiered on January 9, 2011. Macy has received high critical acclaim for his performance, eventually getting an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series in 2014. In 2012, Macy and wife Felicity Huffman both received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Macy continues to perform on the stage and screen. He's come a long way in the industry, starting out as a glorified extra to supporting actor to lead. A great example of hard work paying off and never giving up on your dreams. I'd like to thank you for checking us out. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more videos just like this.